Well guys, I'm stepping out today. I'm stepping out to tell you that today is officially my last day for maple syrup season 2020. Reason being is the temperature is now well above zero Celsius. It's also remaining there overnight and looking around out at my maple trees, the buds are starting to sprout. We had one heck of a rain over the last few days and that really put a damper on things, not to mention our COVID virus going around. So I'm just not feeling it anymore. I'm not, uh, I'm not going to not going to wring these trees out for every last bit of sap because to be honest and many of you know this as you get closer to the end of the season the sap doesn't really taste all that good when you make it into syrup anyways so glad you guys are all here today let's go on out have a look at what we got left to gather up and i'll give you a rundown on how this barrel evaporator worked for me this season so glad you guys are all here and let's go Overall, you guys probably saw throughout the season that I had some ups and downs, just like everyone. Some of the ups you probably saw, some of the downs you probably didn't. But one thing that I noticed with my 20 taps here, it's just a matter of getting out there, getting them positioned so that they're easily accessible, and that keeps the enjoyment up. I tried to get all my taps as close to my main trails as possible so that I wasn't trudging through the snow and half snow to get them. So I went out and I emptied them pretty often. I tried to get out there at least once a day. If I were to have these taps way back in the bush, like some of my other taps you're about to see, well, it was a bit more of a challenge, a bit more of a headache to get to. In terms of getting to taps, you'll also notice that things changed up a little bit. I mentioned to you that the temperature has been getting warmer. Well, as a result, I had to get out the old ATV. This is my Sportsman, my Sportsman 700 2005. This thing is a solid unit. Not gonna get into that, but this is what I'm using right now to go up and get the last of my sap from the big five gallon pails on a different section of the property. So let's go along. I don't know how this is gonna work. My utility trailer, which I wanted to get out, is still buried in snow. So we're gonna use the ATV hooked up to this sleigh to hopefully go over some of the terrain that's still dirt. Cause I wanted to keep the snowmobile out of the dirt but I didn't have another option other than using the sleigh. So let's go on up top, let's get the last of the sap and see how we made out. All right guys, well, this is sort of the reality of springtime around here. We still have a few feet of snow on the trails because it got packed down with a snowmobile. Me thinking it was solid enough to drive the ATV on, well, this is just about where it got me. So, I'm dragging a dead weight here and the ATV can't get any traction because it can't hit the ground with the tires. And all I got to get up is this last little hill and then I'm there. So, I need, uh, I guess I need the winch. I'm going to see if I can winch up to that tree up there, maybe if it's close enough. And uh, that's really my only option. Oh yeah, it's definitely not going to make it. That's great. Oh, for gosh sakes. Oh, 
maybe. What do you guys think? Any optimists out there? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh yeah. Beautiful, got lucky. pretty deep <sighs> hopefully we can get up a little further and then I can tow off that one okay this is gonna take a while Be right back okay here goes nothing Not even close. Should have known. Oh boy, let's hope. I'm not feeling good about this. Come on, come on, we're so close. Oh, come on, come on. Yeah.
don't ever take an ATV out when there is still snow on the ground. That took me oh, probably a good 40 minutes, probably longer actually. But lo and behold, we're at one of our pails. I have six more down there. We're gonna get the last of the sap and I am now done. Now, one of the last pails here brings up a good reminder for me. And what that is, it is to make sure when you're putting your taps in that you leave or at least account for the snow depth. When I put these in, to be honest with you, I bet I had it like this. I was standing on like two feet of snow. I didn't anticipate the ground being so far down. As a result, this one has nothing in it. The reason is I came by yesterday or maybe it was the day before and my pail was laying down there on the ground because the snow had melted. This thing had tipped over. So I lost five gallons of sap, not very fun. So just a reminder, make sure your, your taps are low enough to the ground that they're not going to, uh, you know, go something like this, pop, and then drip onto the ground, or worst case scenario, this actually melts completely, the ground's not flat and it tips over. Just word to the wise there. Okay, last two, let's see how we did. Not too good. Get out of there. That's for probably three days worth, which isn't good at all. We'll pull these taps right out. And one more and let's see what we got. You can see where the uh, rainwater causes the yellow. Let's see. This one holds well, not bad. I don't know what we got in there. Maybe two gallons, maybe less. Let's pull the taps out. Let's go put her in the bounty the barrel and pack her in okay said and done we actually have more than I had thought we have, oh, I don't know, what's that, 40 gallons, 35? Anyways, that's it. Well, folks, there you have it. That was a bit of an episode to end off the season, and that's probably to be expected. Some things I learned, well, I learned that that evaporator is only going to boil probably three, four, maybe five gallons per hour. So if you've got a big 55-gallon drum like that, and it's even only partially full, you better settle in because you're in for about a 10-hour haul. That's about how many times or how many hours I spent on each of my boils. I think I got done five boils in total. You didn't see all of them, which is fine, but there are some out there for you to check out in videos. I got a good chunk of, uh, good chunk of maple syrup done. I'm going to go and have to see exactly how much I got left. I think I probably ended up with, oh, probably 10, 11, maybe 15 liters of syrup. And that's pretty good in my books, considering we came all the way from a wood stove with a buffet tray to that evaporator you saw here today. What's looking ahead for me? Well, for now, I'm going to go and rest because this was a pain and I'm pooched. But besides that, maybe for next year, I'm going to end up with some more maybe uh, efficient or elaborate or, or better setup to help speed up that 10-hour boil. I've looked at buying an evaporator, one of those expensive ones before, but to be honest with you, it's really tough when our season is only sometimes five weeks, maybe six weeks long. And for me to go out and spend five or $6,000 on an evaporator, well... I got a lot of other things I should be buying first. Anyways, that's going to do it for me here today. The sun's just about ready to crest through the clouds there. That probably is an indicator that uh, there's sunnier things on the horizon. And uh, that's probably my couch to go rest. So, guys, appreciate all you watching. Come on back next time. We'll be up to something, but I can tell you it won't be maple syrup. See you then.